Let's take a look at the real estate portfolio fund model from Tilt Analytics. The purpose of this tool is to help a management team evaluate the aggregate performance of a collection of several properties um, and also to raise uh, investor capital. So conceptually, the tool is set up uh, as follows. You have multiple properties. The capital for those properties comes from bank debt and equity. The equity comes from two sources. You have individual property LPs, third party investors at each property level, and you have the fund. And the fund is the GP or the sponsor at the property level. But the fund itself might have its own operating expenses or overhead. And the fund itself might have its own investors. And so you can have LPs at both the fund level and the property level, and the management team is the fund GP. And so um, with that primer on how things work structurally, let's take a look at some of the sheets. The table of contents is all hyperlinked, gives you a, a link to all the sheets in the tool. The executive summary is meant towards presenting potential fund investors with the information they would want to see, how much money uh, equity contribution is required, what are the returns, of course, um, and a variety of other metrics they'd be interested in, number of acquisitions, combined property NOI, debt service, and so forth. You have a portfolio summary showing the, the name of the asset, the project costs, when they're, the, the, the assets being exited, and so forth. Uh, more detail on the portfolio detail sheet, and we will look at inputting all of this. Uh, the model really can do quite a lot at the individual property by property level. Um, we can see uh, a property operating summary for the whole portfolio with different metrics that we might care about. So this is set up to show NOI in each year. Um, but I might say, okay, well, actually, I want to look at cash on cash NOI over project cost. And I can see that for each project. Um, all of my inputs in this particular hypothetical project are, are pretty bogus. So some of these numbers, of course, are, are pretty crazy. Um, but you have property cash flow here. This is the aggregate cash flow of all the properties. You have unleveraged cash flows, leveraged cash flows, uh, equity, and so forth. And you'll notice that the results are shown annually. But in the model, if I scroll to the right, I can also see the same information presented monthly. And I could also look at the cash flows for any one particular property. I could say, well, let's take a look at property number four. And I can see that here. Uh, the fund itself will have cash in and cash out. So you, it's, um, it's cash in comes from the properties and so forth. And cash out can be operating expenses of the fund. Uh, and also it's the fund's share of all the property expenses and so forth. An income statement for the fund. Aggregate um, returns for each of the individual property LPs. You can compare return multiples and IRRs for the LPs on each project, uh, equity required, waterfall details, and so forth. Um, you can see individual uh, returns to LPs uh, in the fund. And so all that information is there. There's multiple charts that are handy for the OM packages. You can have a simple chart here showing the total investment in each property, total NOI uh, grouped together for each property, exit value of each property, equity need for each property and the source of the equity, um, total returns, a nice break even chart showing total uh, aggregate equity investment and uh, total equity returns, and um, a helpful chart here comparing property by property equity multiple and IRR operating expenses, total cash, and um, you know, and then over to the right here, the sheets all the way over to the right are your input sheets. And you'll notice that all of the inputs have a blue highlight background and a bold deep blue font text. 
Uh, most of your inputting is going to be done in the portfolio inputs sheet. This gives you individual property by property inputs for how many units are involved, whether it's a development or an acquisition. You can do both. Um, tell the model when does the activity begin, what's the uh, cost of the project. If it's an acquisition, it's your acquisition cost. If it's a development, it can be your land cost. Uh, if it's a development, you have your project costs. An acquisition might have renovation costs. You can say how long does the development or renovation take in, in terms of how many months. Um, you can have each individual property with its own uh, first loan in terms of LTC. You can have different interest rates, term, amortization period. Uh, you can also have each property with its own refinancing. And so you can tell the model when does that happen, what's the refinance amount, um, what's the interest rate on the refinance, the term, amortization, and so forth. I would also tell the model the uh, operating revenues in the first year and then a growth rate in all subsequent years. And so from that, the model will know your revenues in each year. And you'll notice that the uh, figures here, sort of cascading, is because I, with my inputs, I had the early projects start early and the later projects occur over time. And so the first year for the Starbucks is 2021, but the first year for project number 11 or 12 is 2023. Um, you can tell the model an operating expense ratio so it knows your NOI in each year. Uh, I would say that um, a lot of my clients like to input the revenues and expenses perhaps a little bit differently, so I'm happy to customize the tool for how you'd like to do it. Um, but you can have individual exit dates for each property, and you can tell the model, okay, we're going to exit in 2028 uh, in December. And we're going to value the property based upon uh, a direct dollar amount that you can input, or you can say, no, let's do a cap rate, and we'll do a, an 8% cap, and the model will give you your valuation for that property. Um, at the um, property by property level, you can also have individual LPs coming in, and each of those can have a waterfall in relation to the fund, which of course is the sponsor of the GP in each property. And so the LP might put in 80 or 90% of, of the equity need, uh, maybe get a preferred return of 6%, and I can say, okay, well, there's a waterfall. So let's say, um, you know, up to 6% splits our pari passu. Uh, between 6 and 12% IRR, the property LPs getting 50%, uh, and the fund gets 50%, and I just left it at 50% for all, all IRRs above that. Um, but as, as a fund managing these properties, you may have staff that are on the payroll, so the fund can have, um, you know, you could have executives and you just input the salary and the start date of the, of the position. You might have administration staff, uh, due diligence on the, re on the real estate and so forth. And you can even input uh, annual salary increases, uh, benefits per employee, payroll tax, social security, and so forth. You might also have operating expenses, um, you know, perhaps rent and utilities and marketing for the fund. And so here again, the model makes things as easy as possible. You can input a cost of saying, well, every month it's a hundred bucks. It's a one-time cost of a hundred dollars. You can say every time we hire somebody new, it's a hundred bucks. For everybody on the payroll, every month it's a hundred bucks. So you could say uh, one month every year, it's a hundred bucks. That might be a trade show or something. Um, but at the fund level, you can have up to 10 different fund investors, and here again, this can be changed if you need it to, but I just plugged in and said, okay, well, I got two investors in the fund, each puts in 5 million bucks, that's 45% of the total capital in the fund for equity. Uh, let's uh, give them 40% each of the distributions, um, and so forth. And so the model knows your, the model knows your, your cash holdings over time your total equity need, you can have uh, reserves in place and so forth. Uh, you can also have fees for the fund. You can have acquisition and development fees, property by property, asset management fees, disposition fees and so forth. And so um, that's how the model is set up in overall as a quick look. Uh, happy to discuss the tool further. You can reach me at 
my email, uh, tiltanalytics at gmail.com. And um, thanks for watching.